Hey everybody, welcome to the first video from our new underwater lab that doesn't have a name yet. So we need your help for the name. We're thinking like Sea Base or Base Blue or I don't know. Uh, I, we need a clever name. Maybe if it involved Blue or Blue World or I don't, I don't know. So we're going to throw it out to you guys for some ideas. In any case, welcome to our new amazing underwater base built by Noah. Who doesn't want to be on camera right now, but at some point we're going to get him on camera. Noah built this and it's really cool. And now we have an awesome set for doing Blue World Plus videos. So we're going to be using this a lot and for live streams and all kinds of fun stuff. So in any case, today I want to talk to you a little bit about rebreathers. And the reason is because we just released a video where cameraman Todd and I got certified on the KISS Sidewinder rebreather, and uh, we've gotten you know a few questions uh, from our our non diving crowd about what is a rebreather, and so I thought that I would do a very simple explanation, not completely in depth, not everything you need to know about rebreathers, just a really basic what is a rebreather video to answer your basic questions, and to do that. I have some props. All right, so when we're diving normal open circuit scuba gear, we call it open circuit because when you exhale, the bubbles just come out and they go in the water. Now, when you're breathing air, standing here in your underwater lab, 21% um, of what goes in from the atmosphere is oxygen and the rest is nitrogen, 79% roughly nitrogen. Your body doesn't really do anything with the nitrogen, it just goes in and out, it's, it's inert. Um, it's been part of the Earth's atmosphere for millions of years and our bodies are used to it. We don't use it for anything, but it's there. The oxygen though, we need the oxygen, right? So we metabolize the oxygen to sustain life. But when you exhale, you haven't absorbed all of the oxygen that went in. You're, you're inhaling 21% oxygen from the atmosphere and you're exhaling something like 16 to 17% oxygen. You're also exhaling a bunch of carbon dioxide, which your body created from the oxygen. So when you exhale, when you're scuba diving and you exhale and all those bubbles go out, you're actually wasting some really good oxygen that you could use again if you had a way of capturing it. So a rebreather, this is basically a rebreather. Rebreather is you're breathing in and out of a bag. Now, this simple rebreather would not work for very long. So first of all, you are using more and more of the oxygen every time you breathe, but you're also filling this bag up with carbon dioxide, which is poisonous. So this is a terrible rebreather, but this bag, which in a rebreather we call a counter lung, this bag is the critical, one of the critical parts of a rebreather. So now what could we do to make this counter lung into a better rebreather. Well, watch this. With a small modification, I've added a canister to my rebreather. Now this canister would be filled with a material that chemically reacts with carbon dioxide. Um, it's a material that we call sorb. It looks a little bit like kitty litter and it's basically a chemical um, that when carbon dioxide goes through that, that bunch of particles, it chemically binds the carbon dioxide so that it comes out of the air and then you're not going to rebreathe it. So in my slightly modified rebreather design, now my lungs are going to push the air in and out through this canister that would be filled with scrubber material. And now you have a, a slightly better rebreather. Mm. 
Now, there's only one problem here, and that is that when you exhale, uh, this air goes part of the way through the scrubber because this thing has so much more volume than your lungs have, you won't be able to push all the air out all the way through and then all the way back because there's air in the counter lung. We, we could squish all the air out of the counter lung and then we'd get most of the air through, but obviously when you've exhaled all the way, the air that you've exhaled that's kind of still in this part doesn't get fully scrubbed. So this design really needs modification. We need, to, we need to modify it one more time to make it even better. So now I've made another modification to my lame rebreather and I've put a scuba diving hose on it. Now this, this breathing hose is a unique little design because it has one part you can't see. It's not just a hose. It actually has here in the mouthpiece, it has valves. There's one way valves in the mouthpiece so that um, when you inhale, the air can only come in from one side because the valve on the other side won't let air come in. And when you exhale, it'll only go out the other side because there's a one-way valve there that won't let it go out this way. So when you inhale, it comes in through this hose, and when you exhale, it goes out through this hose. And what that does is it forces the air to go around in a circle. So you don't have a dead space from breathing in and out, and the air is stuck in this little dead space. It, the air, it goes. So when I inhale, it has to pull it in from here, and then to reinforce that, when I exhale, it has to push it down to here. And so now, I have a loop. And this is why you ref they refer to rebreathers as having a breathing loop. This is a breathing loop. You're breathing around a loop. So here we go. Now, obviously I don't have any scrubber material in here, so the CO2 is not actually being scrubbed. So if I breathed on this for a minute or two, I would pass out, um, both because I am re-breathing my CO2 and it's gonna make me lightheaded, which I actually already am, um, and also I'm using up all the oxygen that's in here because every time you breathe, your body's using more of it. And so in a rebreather, Every time you take a breath, your body is going to use some of the oxygen in the breathing loop and it's going to replace that oxygen with carbon dioxide from your body. We don't want the carbon dioxide, so we know that this guy is going to take the carbon dioxide out. But then we have to do something to replenish the oxygen. And that's the key part of a rebreather. You have to have basically a hose that goes in here from a scuba tank full of oxygen so that you can put oxygen in as the oxygen gets depleted. And different rebreathers do that in different ways. That's like advanced, that's the advanced rebreather introduction. We're not going to talk about that right now. But basically there are electronic oxygen sensors in the rebreather that give you a display on your computer of how much oxygen is in there and you have to make sure that the oxygen level stays correct and sometimes you do that manually and sometimes it's done mechanically and sometimes it's done electronically there's all different rebreathers that do it in different ways but every single rebreather in its most fundamental form is this i know Seems pretty low tech. By the way, this one's paper. It, it, it won't work underwater. In fact, it leaks. So it's for demonstration purposes only. Please do not build one of these and go in your swimming pool. You will drown. So ladies and gentlemen, that is a rebreather. And in some other videos, we will talk in a little bit more uh, detail about 
different kinds of rebreathers, how they handle the oxygen. Um, other considerations you have to have in rebreathers, which is that when you change depth, the pressure changes the amount of volume of air in the rebreather, and so you have to compensate for that. So there's this is the like simplest possible explanation, but there's a lot more stuff to learn. But that's basically Rebreather 101. So thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you soon in the blue world, and uh, get ready for some more Rebreather episodes coming your way, because Todd and I are having so much fun with our Kiss Rebreathers, oh baby. Hey everyone, thanks for watching our latest episode all the way to the end. Hit that subscribe button now so you won't miss our next episode.